On LR44, we're going to write proofs especially about isosceles triangles. So on this next page, I'm going to tell you some things, um, but you're not allowed to use what I tell you as a proof. Okay, you are going to today practice proving that these things are true, um, but you're not allowed to do it just because Ms. Cronin said so. Okay, which I know is tempting to be like, well, Ms. Cronin taught it, so it must be true, but that's a terrible way to live your life. Okay, you should have some reason to back it up. Um, although, you know, I've never intentionally lied to you. So trust what I say, but also have a way to verify it. If you have an isosceles triangle. So here's my isosceles triangle. I know it's isosceles because I'm marking the sides congruent. Great. The angle bisector from the vertex angle. So here's my vertex angle. It's an angle bisector if it cuts the angles in half. Okay, so that red line is also going to be the median, which remember means cuts the side in half. It'll be the altitude, which sometimes we call height. And that makes a 90 degree angle. And because it makes a 90 degree angle and cuts that side in half, it's also the perpendicular bisector. Friendly reminder, friends, because some of us still struggle. That symbol means perpendicular. Okay, there's no symbol for bisector. So that means if I know a triangle is isosceles and I know it is one of those things, I automatically know it is the other three as well. And we're going to practice this a little bit. So I'm told CD is an angle bisector and that the perimeter is 36. They give me AB is 10. Because that's an angle bisector, it's also the median. So each piece here will be 5. So AD will be 5 centimeters. Then to find AC, which is this side, well, these sides will have to be the same because it's isosceles. So 36 minus 10, I have 26, so each side gets 13 centimeters. When I work with my angles, if I'm finding angle BDC, I'm going to start at B, go to D, turn, go to C. Because BD is an angle bisector, it's also my altitude, so that will have to be 90 degrees. Angle ABD then, I'm going to start at A, go to B, turn, go to D, and I have a choice now. I can do this one of two ways. I can use this green triangle that I'm highlighting and say, okay, I have a 90 degree angle. And I have a 52 degree angle. So there's 38 degrees left for angle ABD. Cool. I can also use this blue triangle and say, okay, I have 180 degrees. I have two angles that are 52 degrees each. So I'm going to subtract off 104. So I have 76 degrees left, and I'm cutting that angle in half, so I get 38 again, right? So this whole thing would be 76, cut it in half, you get 38. I do not care which way you do it, okay? It does not matter as long as you get to an answer. When I'm writing proofs for these, my strategy is um, going to remain mostly the same. I'm just adding one more line, okay? So I kind of think of LR3 as a step one proof. Right, so you did this much. Okay, for that whole chapter, you found three congruent parts, and then you said this triangle is congruent to that triangle by whichever shortcut. Up until today, you then had kind of a step two proof where you had that whole thing, and then you added another line saying this piece is congruent to that piece by CPCTC. You're still going to do that today. Today is kind of a step three. You're going to have your three congruent parts. You're going to have your two congruent triangles. You'll say this part is congruent to that part by CPCTC or because corresponding parts are congruent, whatever. 
And then you're going to add another line saying, this is an angle bisector by definition of angle bisector, or this is a median by definition of median, or this is the midpoint by definition of a midpoint, whatever. Okay. Um, your parts that you prove congruent should be relevant to what definition you're proving. So if you're proving angle bisectors, it should be the two angles that are being bisected. Okay. And we'll practice that a little bit. So I'm given y is the midpoint of xz. Even if I'm not sure how I'm going to use it, I'm going to write it down. And that was given. Because y is the midpoint, I know that these two will be congruent. So my very next line can be xy is congruent to yz. And my reason can be y is midpoint or definition of midpoint. Notice to use it as a reason over here, it had to be a statement first. Okay, I can't jump straight to step two. I have to write out that it was given to me. Then I'm going to use xw congruent to wz because that's marked congruent for me. It was marked in my picture, so that counts as given. And then when I look at this picture, I can get wy congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And if you want to write same side instead, that's A-OK. -okay. All right, so I've found three congruent parts. Right? I have steps two, three, and four all are congruent parts. So now I'm going to say my triangles are congruent. So I'll say triangle x, w, y is congruent to triangle z, w, y. I used all three sides, so my shortcut is side, side, side. My next step is to say this part's congruent to that part, and my reason will be CPCTC, and I'm not going to try to write orange on orange. If I'm trying to prove WY is the angle bisector, if that's true, angle 1 has to be congruent to angle 2. Okay, So that's the parts I'm going to prove congruent using CPCTC. If you'd rather write if triangle's congruent, then part's congruent, you can do that. If you'd rather write out that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, that's okay too. Done that. My very last step then will be exactly what I was asked to prove. W, Y is the angle bisector. Of angle X, W, Z. And my reason will be definition of angle bisector. As soon as what I was asked to prove is my last line, I am good to go. I am done. All right, on this next one, we're going to flip our given and our proven. Okay, so this time we're given WY is the angle bisector of angle X, W, Z. So I'm going to write that out first. Because it's an angle bisector, I'll be able to prove angle one is congruent to angle two.
and my reason will be definition of angle bisector or I could put WY is angle bisector, either way it works. Just like before, I have XW congruent to WZ. And that will be given because it was marked in my picture for me. I didn't have to draw it in. And then just like before, I can get WY congruent to itself using the reflexive property or same side. I have my three congruent parts. Now I'm ready to say my triangles are congruent. And they will work out to be the exact same triangles I had before. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy and copy and paste that. But my reason has changed. This time I have two sides and the angle between them. So my reason has to have two sides angle in between them. So I'm writing the angle between the two sides that I have. My next step is to say this piece is congruent to that piece by CPCTC. I'm going to use a color I haven't used yet. Um, do a dark red. If it's the midpoint, then XY has to be congruent to YZ. So those are the pieces I want to get congruent using CPCTC. And then because those are congruent now, I can jump in and say y is midpoint of xz. And I could say because xy is congruent to yz, or if I want to sound extra fancy, I will say definition of midpoint.